Uh, I think um, that was what was exciting, you yeah. know, to, to create a world that people hadn't seen before, that we had, it had been referenced and talked about, but never seen in this detail. So, and I was watching the film last night, the first time on the big screen actually, and to see Cybertron in all its glory was just mind blowing. Yeah. And, um, and I, I, wanna, I wanna live there, I wanna visit that place for sure. I didn't have to look at my closet for what I was gonna wear to work. Uh, whatever I rolled out of bed in is what I went to work in, which was really great. Like, because it's not about me. It's not about my image. It's not about any of that. It's really about you conveying a character just strictly through your voice. And, and what that entails is a lot more, I think, than when we're actually showing ourselves. You know, you, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's incredible what can be conveyed, uh, what you have to do. There's this very, very fun thing to do when you're doing voice acting called efforts. I don't know mm -hmm. if anyone is familiar with this, but it is kind of like torture. Like you like are literally making yourself go through, you know, anytime you hear us grunting or screaming or weeping or anything, like if there's dust flying around, that, like, and it takes another part of your brain to do that. You like, also record all of the, you know, the, the, the dialogue scenes, and then you sit in the booth yeah. and you, they'll play the image of a fight scene and you've got to go, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, all, fall off a cliff. Uh. all of that stuff. And, and the um, difference is, is when you're doing animation, like you're doing it in the booth, like if, when we're doing like, you know, when we do doing Marvel movies and we go in and do ADR and efforts, it's completely different because we're looking at what we've done, but like in animation, it's just like, oh, you really have to be an idiot in this booth. <laughs> you have to like really like throw yourself around. And I think that takes a certain kind of humility. Honestly, I'm like, it takes a certain, you just have to, you gotta humble yourself. You gotta let go. You gotta let go. And and it's 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 still fun. I will always hate it. Always hate it, but it's still it, it's still you you have to kind of get over yourself and just be like, all right, well. That's why it's good that you get to wear whatever you want when you go in there. So if like you got Cheeto dust on your shirt and you're in sweatpants, <laughs> it doesn't even matter. You just go for it. I don't even know if I answered the question. What was the question? What was the question? <laughs> Well, I, I had this sort of concern at the beginning. I said, oh, like, do we have to really push the sort of the vocal range and, and nuance and so on, even more so than uh, the normal animation because they're transformers. And I said, you know, they're robots. There's not a lot of expression there. So we're gonna have to go even further. And, and that was a bit of a, a tightrope because, yeah. um, and, and Josh said, no, there will be little subtle sort of movements that still, uh, you know, we still see them as transformers, but there's enough human sort of a emotion that's going to resonate too. Um, but I, I mean, I had a lot of work to do as far as the, a little bit of the feel to what Peter Cullen had done, but particularly in the very end of the film, leaning right into that resonance and the cadence. Um, but the beginning, for well, most of the film, having a more playful, youthful version of the character and ha allowing there to be a sense of humor and fun to it. Um, and I, I really, I really enjoyed that. And, and you know, you, you are just left with your voice, obviously, not your physicality. So I found myself um, being a little more creative with what I was doing with my voice, which makes me think about, you know, the, a sort of live action film, maybe putting a little more into my vocal <laughs> performance. <laughs> As I keep thinking about this film more, more and more, it's playing on a lot of real life situations that we find ourselves in. Like, I was talking to somebody, one of my good friends that I've had since college, and I was like, oh, wow, like, you don't really have a lot of those over time. Like, friendships sometimes dissipate. People go in different directions, be it either our morals change, our careers change, what we believe in, you know? And so to see that that is something that transfers, that story transfers across the board, even in a story like Transformers, is captivating to me. Uh, I even said that there's something very Greek and, and very Shakespearean about this, this relationship between brothers or friends who decide to go the other way, something very Julius Caesar, very, you know, like mm. it, it, it's amazing that cartoons can do that. The animation has the, the space and, and, and the, the breath to do that. And it's no different than Megatron and Optimus Prime. I mean, like we, we, we come across people in our lives that impact us and at some point, we're just gonna change. At some point, those people will be there uh, in some 
points they won't. And and we don't know why oftentimes, like I look back at some friendships that have ended in my life and I'm like, I don't even understand why that happened. I have mm -hmm. no clue why this person isn't there anymore. But it, you have to remember that it did impact you at some point and that there was a reason that that person was placed in your life. and. And also what I love about this movie is that what does it mean when you are living in a system that just doesn't work for you anymore? Like what what happens when you're like, oh, what I've been told most of my life is a lie. Like, I actually don't want to be this. I actually don't want to follow this path. I actually, you know, and you get to see that here. Um, it's a, there's a lot of morals in this story that I didn't, a lot of comparisons mm -hmm. in, in Transformers 1 that I didn't realize, um, but it is the start of something. Like what happens when we become those people who ha have our own minds and, and our own beliefs and and just come up against somebody else that has been in our life, or our friendships that we've had in our life that it just doesn't mesh anymore. And so I think it's a story that resonates across all generations. You know, like even the younger kids are gonna realize when they get older, there's friends that they have that aren't there anymore. They're gonna challenge things. They're not gonna believe in things that they used to anymore. And they're gonna fight for what's right, hopefully. But that's what's cool about this franchise is that all those things are there. It's all layered in there in such a beautiful way. And what's really cool about, you know, what Chris has brought to it um, is that you get to see that levity. You get to see that kind of kinship and that kind of connection between the two of us uh, played out through these characters. And that's really cool. Like we've just never seen it before. So that, that's what I love about this story. Cine, música, series, libros, teatro, artes plásticas, gastronomía, todo el mundo de la cultura y el entretenimiento aquí en El Tiempo. Suscríbase al canal de YouTube del Tiempo, que además es gratis, y le mandamos notificaciones de nuevos videos. Hola, hola.